Prince Machikini in our next case of high yield pulmonary cases is a case of acute lung injury. So first I want to talk about acute lung injury in general. The lung really has a limited way in which it can respond to an injurious process. And typically this falls along a spectrum of acute lung injury that ranges from organizing pneumonia at one end, which I'll talk about in a subsequent video, to diffuse alveolar damage at the other end of the spectrum. So patients with diffuse alveolar damage, or DAD, typically have acute hypoxic respiratory failure and are often admitted to the ICU and they require ventilator support. So in this case, we have a case of diffuse alveolar damage, or DAD. And what I want you to first notice in this low power is that this is a diffuse process and that the entire lung is markedly abnormal. However, an important point in these cases is that they can also be patchy. They don't necessarily need to diffusely involve the entire specimen. And the term diffuse in diffuse alveolar damage actually relates to the fact that within an alveolar, lobular, or alveolar unit, the damage is diffusely involving all the components, but not necessarily the whole specimen. So you can actually have a patchy diffuse alveolar damage process. So let's zoom in a little bit higher and start to see what's going on. So at this intermediate magnification, what I want you to notice is that it's a relatively busy process. And really, there's a lot going on. So let's zoom in a little bit further so we can start to see what's going on. So before we get into looking at all these components, I think it's helpful to take a step back and think about what's the underlying cause and mechanism behind this diffuse alveolar damage. So diffuse alveolar damage is the classic way in which the lung responds to an injury and it can be caused by a number of things that range from infection, drug exposures, aspiration, radiation, inhalation of noxious compounds, connective tissue disease, and as an acute exacerbation in underlying initial lung disease. And the injury is triggered to, by damage to the alveolar lining cells, or these type 1 pneumocytes, that are injured by this injurious process, whether it's an infectious agent or it's an inhalational injury. And this injury causes some necrosis of these cells, which causes a release of some debris into the air spaces, as well as activates a number of inflammatory markers, which then cause, causes further leaking of serum proteins and edema fluid into these alveolar spaces, which then mix with the necrotic debris and surfactant proteins to form these eosinophilic hyaline membranes. So if we zoom down here, we can see them quite nicely. So hyaline membranes are actually the major hallmark of this phase of diffuse alveolar damage that we call the acute or exitive phase of diffuse alveolar damage. And as you can see, they're thick, densely eosinophilic material that line the alveolar walls, as you can see here, in these kind of linear real structures here. It was taught by Dr. Aubrey that it looks like someone really took some a tube of uh, pink toothpaste and kind of smeared it inside the alveoli. I think that's a really good way of understanding it. So there's a nice hyaline membrane there as well. There's some more hyaline membranes as well. So the next phase of an acute lung injury or in diffuse alveolar damage is the organizing or proliferative stage. And this stage is really characterized by proliferation of these fibroblasts within the interstitial septum here. And you also get a not only proliferation of fibroblasts, but you get replacement of the injured type 1 pneumocytes with these type 2 pneumocytes here. So as we move around, you can see that these cells are a little bit more cuboidal that are kind of hobnailing into the air spaces here. And they can have a bit more of atypical nuclei, often with prominent nucleoli. And they can actually look a little bit scary when you get to them at higher power. As we get into this organizing phase, the hyaline membranes are going to start to resolve. And if you get a biopsy at this stage, they may really only be focally present, and you really have to hunt for them um, in order to uh, make the diagnosis. Um, and as the lung heals, it will continuously to evolve with this process, and we'll start to see some areas of squamous metaplasia. In this case, has another finding that you can often see in these cases here. So you notice here's an organizing fibrinous thrombi within this um, uh, vessel here that you can see in kind of the later stages of diffuse alveolar damage. And so in addition to making the diagnosis of a, an acute lung injury, an important role for the pathologist is also trying to identify a potential underlying etiology of the acute lung injury. So 
infectious process should always be considered. And there's some particular infectious things that the pathologist can recognize in these cases. And one of these is pneumocystis. And it should always be considered as a cause of diffuse alveolar damage, especially in immunocompromised hosts. And you should really be really using fungal stains quite liberally to try and identify pneumocystis, as not all cases will have the characteristic foamy exudate that you see in pneumocystis. It's also important to look out for viral cytopathic inclusions, which can be a bit challenging sometimes because these type 2 pneumocytes can look quite atypical, and I find it can sometimes mimic viral inclusions of CMV. But uh, have a good look out for that because that can be another potential underlying cause. A subset of acute lung injury can also be caused by aspiration, so looking for foreign polarizable material, where the foreign material can sometimes uh, lead to a, a clues for potential underlying etiology. So to summarize, this is a case of diffuse alveolar damage, which has diffuse abnormalities involving all compartments of the pulmonary alveole. The first phase of DAD is the acute or exudative phase, where we have these densely eosinophilic linear hyaline membranes that are lining the alveolar walls here. Kind of looks like toothpaste that someone smeared on the alveolus here. Um, the next phase is the organizing phase of diffuse alveolar damage, and that's where we get the proliferation of these fibroblasts, as well as the type 2 pneumocyte hyperplasia that expand these, inter this, these, these alveolar septa. Um, and once again, a reminder, it's important to exclude causes of infection and aspiration, as these can provide important information to the treating clinicians and provide an opportunity to treat the underlying etiology. Thanks, I hope you enjoyed this, and stay tuned for more high-yield pulmonary cases. Hope everyone has a great day.